Good evening, my fellow Singaporeans. My name is Chi Soon Juan, and I am the Secretary General of the Singapore Democratic Party. I want to welcome all of you to our GE 2020 campaign, a very unusual campaign in that it is held online without the usual mass rallies. Of course, it's more exciting if you see thousands upon thousands of your fellow sing citizens cheering and hollering at an outdoor campaign rally. But because of the coronavirus, we have to restrict our campaign speeches online. Now, even then, I'm excited because the trade-off with having an online campaign is that I get to have this genuine, intimate conversation with you in your living room or at a hawker centre if you're out having dinner. Or mums, if you're attending to your children, you can pick up your phone or get in front of your laptop and watch our speeches. Uh, 所以我们只有可以在网际网络跟你们这样子联络我有时候我会用一些华语跟福建话来跟你们讲一讲解释一下子我希望说我可以再弄其他的一些摄频谢谢 now, as exciting as this election is, it is nonetheless a somber affair as you are called upon to make a decision on who you want to represent you in Parliament for the next five years. I want to have this conversation with you as we talk about how we are going to take our country forward at this crucial time. So my friends, in this election, I urge you not to fall for the PAP's favourite trick again. Don't get into this trap of turning this election into an unseemly circus of you calling me names and I scolding you back. This is not what elections are about. At least it's not what an intelligent election is all about. Instead, we want to talk about what ideas each party has that will address your worries, your needs, your aspirations. That's exactly what the SDP is going to do. So, are you ready? Good, let's get started. Now, I want to begin with the fact that the PAP is bankrupt of ideas of, on how to take Singapore into the future. Now, I know that this is a big claim to make, but I wouldn't make it if I couldn't back it up. Now, I'll show you with hard evidence how this is the case. So please, listen very carefully because this affects you, your job and your future. Now, in 2016, analysts at the rating agency Moody's said, enhanced productivity is key to higher growth going forward. Yahoo Finance also said that productivity gains is the only way to boost growth. Now here's what Mr. Lim Sui Se said when he was the manpower minister. The only workable solution is to up our productivity gain. Now let me very briefly explain what productivity is and how our economy depends on it. I don't want to get all nerdy and technical on you, but this is important. Now, productivity is the amount of labour taken to make a certain product like a computer or provide service like food delivery. If fewer workers can produce more, that is make more things, sell more products or provide more services, then the company makes more profit and doesn't have to employ and pay so many workers. The company grows and can pay workers better, which benefits the whole economy. If the company is a good one, it will also pay its workers more. Everybody benefits. Now, on the other hand, if productivity is poor, then everyone is worse off. So it's clear, productivity equals economic growth equals jobs. Now, the PAP obviously knows this. Now, this is why the Economic Review Committee, led by then DPM Li Xianlong, said that one of its goals is to raise the productivity of businesses. And with all this in mind, let's take a look at how the PAP has performed, shall we? Now, in 2016, Japanese investment bank Nomura said that now, Singapore's drive in restructuring its economy to lift productivity has failed thus far. In 2017, Straits Times reported that labour productivity 
in Singapore is decreasing. The newspaper again reported that in 2019, Singapore's labour productivity fell. Even Mr Lee Hsien Loong himself acknowledged the problem when he said Singapore has maxed out on the easy ways of driving economic growth and that productivity is very tough to do. And because productivity is declining, our GDP growth has also taken a hit. Now, it more than half between 2011 and 2016. In 2019, it sank to 0.7%, the slowest growth rate in a decade. At this rate, Vietnam's economy will be bigger than Singapore's in a decade if current conditions continue. Now, do you know who said this? Our very own DBS. And as I showed you earlier, without productivity increase, the economy slows down, and when the economy slows down, jobs are affected. Between 2016 and 2019, the unemployment rate in Singapore went up. As a result, more and more Singaporeans, including professionals, are turning to driving grab cars or delivering food to subsist. We've even come up with a new term, the graduate poor, because our graduates either cannot find employment or if they find jobs, are woefully underemployed. And while younger Singaporeans are having a tough time, our elderly have it even worse. Now listen to the statement released by the Manpower Ministry. The increase in unemployment rate of Singapore citizens over the last decade was driven most, in, most consistently by those aged 65 and over. Many of these elderly people have to work in menial, back-breaking jobs as road sweepers, pump attendants, cleaners, janitors, you name it. What kind of society have we become? What kind of people have we turned into? What kind of government do we have that treats our elderly in such a shameful manner? Now, in case you think that all this was caused by the COVID crisis, I need to remind you that everything that I've just told you happened before the pandemic came about. For 17 years, since 2003, when Mr. Lee declared that productivity increase was the way to go, the PAP has not been able to deliver. I just showed you the facts, ladies and gentlemen. I just showed you what analysts have said, not what I have said, analysts have said. Uh, Mr. Lee's leadership inspires as much confidence as the sloth inspires exercise. Look at this international survey that was done in November last year, which asked respondents the question, do you believe that you and your family will be better off in five years' time? Nearly 60%, I repeat, 60% of Singaporeans said no. Then now all of a sudden, just before the elections, the PAP says it can create tens of thousands of jobs. Straits Times says that the government will create jobs on an unprecedented scale. Hokkien, we say, the pian gina, bluff children. Now it sounds like a move out of desperation, a political gimmick pushed out for the GE rather than a proper, well thought out plan. So, how are we going to get out of this predicament, this problem? The idea, at least in the next four or five years, is to ensure that as much cash remains in the pocket of citizens to ensure that the economy continues to build and jobs are maintained and created. Now, we can do this through the SDP's plan. It's called the four yes, one no plan. Let me spell it out for you. Yes, number one, cut the GST to 0% until the end of next year. Now, this will give Singaporeans greater spending power, which will help businesses 
which will in turn help to stave off retrenchments. After 2021, the SDP will oppose the planned increase of the GST to 9% by the PAP. It is not smart economics to raise the GST during this period. Yes, number two, the SDP will fight for retrenchment benefits to be paid to workers. Under our program called Restart, it's a re-employment scheme and temporary assistance for the retrenched. It's a mouthful, and so we've shortened it to Restart. Now, if a worker is retrenched, the government pays 75 of his or her last drawn salary for the first six months, 50% for the second six months, and 25% for the final six months, capped at the median wage. Now, to encourage the, the development of SMEs, we propose a scheme where people who are retrenched now have the option of investing their unemployment benefits in a business venture. And it works like this. If you get retrenched and through an online matching system, find other retrenched workers and you can come up with a viable business project, you can get your entire restart payouts stretched over 18 months in one lump sum. The pooled sum among you can be used as capital for a startup cooperative business. Now, such a program will help to put Singapore firmly on the road to a more innovative economy where the people run the show and create more meaningful jobs. It is a great way to invest in retrenched workers and get them to be more productive members of the economy. Yes, number three. The SDP will push to provide retirees over 65 with a monthly income of $500. Currently, many of our retirees depend on their working children for financial support. The average amount is about $500 because the government continues to withhold their CPF funds after 55. Under our policy called the Retirement Income Scheme for the Elderly or RISE, the bottom 80% of retirees will receive $500 every month. With retrenchments and pay cuts expected to rise as a result of COVID-19, now, working adults will find it even harder to provide for their own children and take care of their retired parents at the same time. RISE will reduce the financial pressure of younger working generations. Now, some people ask, well, how do you plan to pay for all this? Well, the same way that the PAP is paying for the $93 billion budget that it signed this year. We've worked out between restart and RISE, the two schemes. The amount that we'll incur a year is about $5 billion. At this rate, it will take us 20 years to reach the amount that the PAP will spend in the next year. The difference is that much of the PAP's budget, what they call the resilience, the unity, the solidar uh, solidarity packages, are also going to go to helping corporations, many of which are GLCs. How much of this money is going to go into propping up ailing and zombie companies that are unproductive and should be just put to, out to pasture? How is this good for the economy? We're going into Parliament to scrutinise these packages and where they don't benefit the people, we'll fight to replace them with our proposals like Restart and Rise that go to putting money into your pockets so that you can help to stimulate the economy. Now, there are also ways to raise revenue to fund these programs, like raising the GST for luxury goods or introducing a wealth tax for the ultra-rich, which even PAP MPs advocate, or reinstating the estate duty for multi-million dollar homes or introducing capital gains tax and so on. There are many ways to fund necessary programs to help the people, we cannot allow the wealthy to make ordinary people, people like you and me, make all the sacrifices while the rich get richer. If this happens, wealth disparity and the income gap will get wider and wider. And believe me, this will tear society apart and the economy will be irreparably damaged. This is what's happening in other countries. And if we don't learn and course correct, 
we will face this similar problems. I guarantee you this. I will elaborate on this 4Y1N in a subsequent speech. Let's move on to yes number four. Put the people first. Now, the PAP has shown that it always takes care of itself and its kind first, even before it takes care of the people. This is why it dominates the economy through GLCs instead of letting the people run businesses through SMC, SMEs. Now, to encourage SMEs to grow, GLCs must scale back. Now, at the moment, the government owns and runs businesses in anything from supermarkets to childcare centres to IT startups. This unnecessarily competes and squeezes out entrepreneurs, preventing Singapore from becoming an innovative and productive place. Now, apart from the four yeses, we want to register one very big no. We want to firmly tell the PAP not to proceed with the idea of increasing our population to 10 million or even 6.9 million. Now, on top of that, now there will be retrenchments and job losses to come. We need to stop this foolishness of bringing in ever more foreigners to compete with our citizens for jobs. And many of these jobs are given to foreigners because they accept lower wages, which Singaporeans cannot survive on. Jobs like admin staff, sales personnel, engineers, nurses, IT professionals, bankers, and even hairdressers and bus drivers are all jobs that Singaporeans can do, but are given to foreigners simply because of cheaper wages. As a result, as I pointed out earlier, many of our PMETs have had to resort to driving grab cars or delivering food. So, as you can see, these 4Y1N issue direct, addresses directly and meaningfully the concerns of our people, and on two levels. One, they take care of the immediate necessities of Singaporeans during this COVID pandemic, and two, they ensure that the longer-term problems that confront our nation are dealt with. We will further elaborate on them in the coming days. And let me come back to the original point, that the PAP doesn't have any idea on how to take Singapore forward. The clearest sign yet was when Mr. Heng Sui Kiet released the report of the Committee for the Future Economy, or CFE as they call it, in 2017. It is just a rehash of the same old points the same points that led us to the dismal stage. But don't take it from me. Listen to what an expert like Linda Lowe, a professor of economics, said. What the CFE doesn't do is not address the question of why all the previous plans and committees did not succeed and why you're continuing with more of the same. I mean, essentially, if you'll be reading this, they say the same thing in different words. Now, didn't Einstein say that insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result? Do you now believe me when I say that the PAP is bankrupt of ideas on how to take Singapore forward? Before the COVID outbreak, the PAP was already at a loss on how to inspire the people and grow the economy. But here's where it really matters, my friends. Going forward, the PAP will continue to rely on spin to con get Singaporeans to believe that it is doing the right thing. I know I run the risk of boring you, as I said, by getting all nerdy and technical on you. But entertaining you is easy. All I have to do is to come up with a few one-liners and zingers to burn the PAP, and everybody will have a good laugh and then turn off the computer. But what, that, what does that do for you? How does that improve your situation? I don't cite you all these dates, these figures and reports for fun. As I mentioned at the outside, I want to run this campaign on facts. With facts, I can reason with you. And I know that you want an opposition that reasons with you, not talk nonsense. And I hope I've given you enough reasons to vote for the SDP. To vote for the kind of opposition that you've been looking for a competent, constructive, and compassionate party. We cannot go on like this, my friends. 
if you continue to vote for the PAP despite knowing everything I told you, then we have no one else to blame when things go from bad to worse for you and your family. Now on Sunday when I was doing this mega walkabout at Bukit Batok when I walked the entire state where it took about nearly five hours, a resident came up to me at the end and asked if I was tired. I was, I, I must admit, it was physically taxing. But then I found myself quite ready to carry on. Because even though I was physically exha exhausted, I was ready to continue the journey. So no, I told them I'm not tired. Not when it comes to standing up for my fellow men and women. Speaking up for those who can't defend themselves, especially for those who can't defend themselves. Making a stand for what is right and just. Martin Luther once said, for here I stand, I can do no other. I've walked for 30 years. And if I have to walk another 30 years to stand up for what is right, then consider it done. I have but one life to give, and I gladly give it up for justice, for righteousness, and for freedom. I invite you, my fellow Singaporeans, to stand up and walk with me. Good night.